Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I believe we ought to pray. Father God, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for what it is you're doing right now. God, help us, Lord, to never take, Lord, these moments for granted. God, help us never to take your presence for granted. And Lord, we just want to be obedient to you. Lord, God, you called us a peculiar people, God. And Lord, we we claim that, God. We like that, Lord. It's a little bit different. But God, we believe we ought to get used to different. And Lord, I believe God serving you. Lord, you said, be ye separate, come out from among them. And so, Lord, I just pray, Lord, right now, God, that your anointing will continue to fall in this place. God, that your presence will continue to dwell among your people. God, I'm not convinced, Lord, that you're done ministering yet. God, I believe, Lord, we'll know it. God, we'll feel the release, Lord, when that happens. And so, Father, God, for these next few minutes, God, I pray, Lord, that the word, God, that you put, Lord, will come out, God, that your word, Lord, it'll hey, it'll fall on that cultivated ground, Lord, God, that the praise has been opening up, God, that the worship, that the testimonies have been opening up. God, I pray, Lord, right now, I bind the enemy in the name of Jesus, Lord. Right now, God, I claim victory, Lord, over every situation, Lord, in this house. Over every single person, every individual in this house, Father, I pray for freedom tonight. God, I pray, Lord, that you just come. It said the, you said the anointing will break the yoke. And so, God, I pray, Lord, for that very say, that very thing right now in the name of Jesus. God, we praise you and we love you. God, Lord, just like John the Baptist, God, I want to decrease, Lord, so you'll increase. So have your way tonight. And it's in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. I won't, I promise this ain't going to be too long. When uh, dad, growing up, he'd always make vegetable soup. Uh, and my mom would do uh, a lot of the cooking. But dad, he'd say, when it's time for the vegetable soup, he'd say, this is my job. Right? And he'd be the one to make the vegetable soup. And so I remember he'd, he'd cut up the carrots and he'd cut up the celery and he'd cut up the potatoes. And you know, he'd, he'd brown the meat and all those different types of things. Uh, and, and he'd put each ingredient in, right? he put each ingredient in. He'd pour the tomato juice, I think it was. And I remember I could taste that. I could taste that soup. And if it was missing one of the ingredients, I could tell you. I could tell you. He made it pretty often, right? The reason you make it pretty often is because if you make it on Sunday, you can eat it all week, <laughs> right? That's good. That's a good thing. But dad had this special ingredient that he would put in his vegetable soup. Anybody know what it was? What was it? No, I don't help you guys. I already told you, yeah. yeah. It was called uh, Worcester sauce, right? He, he'd, put the, he'd put the Worcester sauce in there. And, if it, and listen to me. If he didn't have that ingredient, Ramona, I knew it. I'd say, Dad, you didn't put the Worcester sauce in there, did you? Yeah. And if I went in, and if I went in and I would taste it before he'd stir it all together, right? It wouldn't taste near as good, John, as when it was all stirred together. Listen to me. I believe that there's a stirring happening in this fellowship, right? And it started, it started about a year and a half ago, at least for this old boy, but I believe it's continuing. It's continuing. John chapter five, this is what would happen. There'd be a certain season that an angel would come down and he'd stir up the water. The Bible says that he would trouble the waters and the first person that would make it into the pool, I believe it was a, 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 a Bethesda, the pool of Bethesda. The first person that would make it in would be healed. They'd be healed, Jeremy. And this is what would happen. One day, Jesus came walking along. And he looked down and he saw this man who had a, who had an infirmity. He couldn't walk for 38 years, Robert. 38 years. He would lay there. Jesus came and asked him a question. He says, wilt thou be made whole? Let me translate that. He says, do you really want it? Amen. Come on. Yep. He said, do you really want it? He said, but there's no man, right, that's been able to get me. Somebody else would always get there ahead of me. But I need you to ask, this is what I believe he said. He wanted to ask this question, like, do you really want it? Amen. Do you really, really want it? Or are you just saying it with your lips? You see, listen, don't give him just lip service. You got to give him everything in your heart. 
Right? You get listen. Through your praise, you show him you want it. Right? Through your prayer time, you show him you want it. Through reading his word, you show him you want it. Through going out and proclaiming the good news each and every day, you show him you want it. Are you doing that? Do you really want it? And this is what I need you to know. I believe the Lord's been stirring within this fellowship. And there's a place in the pool for each and every one of us. And listen, we don't even have to go and get into the pool, Peggy. All we need is a relationship with Jesus. Right? He said, do you really want it? And he say, yes, Lord, I really want it. Then you better buckle up, baby, because he's going to give it to you. Peter, hey, Peter, the, the Jesus came and he said, listen, I got to wash your feet. He says, the Lord, you can't wash my feet. He said, either I wash your feet or they, I don't got any part in you. What did Peter say? He said, I want it. Just go ahead and give me a bath. Right? He said, put it on the head. Cover me all over. Listen, if, if you really want it, that's what you'll say to him. What? He wanted it. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hey, <laughs> Elisha followed Elijah. Saw Jeremy. Saw all the miracles. Saw God work through Elijah time and time again. It was kind of like a mentor type of relationship. He'd follow him. He'd see God move. And I believe he'd take it all in. He'd take it all in. And it got to the point where it was time for Elijah to go up. To be taken away. And Elijah said to Elijah, he said, what do you want? He said, I want a double portion of what you had. What did he say? Hey, I want what you got, but I want a whole lot more. And this is what Elijah said. He said, well, if you're around and I get taken up, I believe you'll get that. Next thing you know, a chair of fire comes sweeping down through, takes Elijah up. What falls down? Elijah's mantle. Listen, Elisha got a hold of that mantle. He said, where is the guy of Elijah? And he smoked the river and it caught it. Listen, Elisha wanted to double portion, and that's exactly what he got. And now if you want to double portion, you can have it. But do you want it? Do you want it? Listen to me. Just don't want it here on Sunday night. It's easy to want it when the presence of God is here. And you're getting encouraged and you're getting edified by one another. But do you want it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, throughout the whole week? Sharon, that's where the rubber meets the road. Do you want it? JB, I thought he was going to preach it. I laughed when he started talking about Ezekiel. It's Ezekiel 47. Ezekiel 47, he said, Son of man, I want you to come on out into the river. Yeah. Yeah. And he got out into the river. So it's about ankle deep. Some of y'all might be ankle deep tonight. Yep. If we're just calling a spade a spade, at some points, the water goes down and we're all standing ankle deep. God didn't move, but you did and I did. We got out into the deep but for whatever reason, life circumstances, we started walking back towards the shore. And maybe that's where you're at tonight. Maybe you said, listen, I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. I've been in over my head. But for whatever reason, right now, I've been retreating. He said, come on out to your ankles. He said, now, you come a little further. Got out Dave to his knees. He could still stand. Right. Still, at that point, he could still control, right, what was going on around him. He said, okay, come on. And the Bible says it got up to his loins, about waist deep. Now, at that point, I think the waters was a moving a little bit. We're probably starting to think, oh, mercy. Oh, my. If I go any further, I might not be able to touch. Right. Amen. And it's at that point, that I pray that everybody in the house put us in their heart and said, hey, I want it. Let's get out to the place where I can't touch. 
Let's get out where the waters are moving. Listen, I believe the water was moving quick. He said, come in up. Get in over your head. Hey, listen, and see what God can do. But do you want it? Because Dennis, it's not easy. Nobody said it'd be easy. Jesus didn't say it would be easy. Do you want it? Ezekiel wanted it. Peter wanted it. Elisha wanted it. Dad threw those ingredients in and he'd stir it all together and he'd taste it. He'd say, "Mm -mm, not quite right. It's not quite right, John. He needed to add a little bit more of an ingredient. You need to know if you really want it, then we've got some ingredients that we got to throw into the pot. That's right. Paul told Timothy, he said, it was in your grandmama yeah, right. and it was in your mama and I'm persuaded that it was in you. So what do you got to do? You got to stir up the gift of God that's been put inside of you. Listen, he's put gifts inside of each and every one of you. And it's your job and my job to stir it up. How do we do it? We got to pour in the ingredients. We got to pour in the praise. I know Tim talked about it this morning. I reckon you needed to hear it again. And the sister talked about it too. I like it. I like it when a good God plan comes together. (laughs) David danced. Dance before the Lord. He praised God. Even when the people that was closest to him, even when his wife, Michael, looked at him and said, what are you doing? How can you do such a thing? He said, listen, sweetheart, I'm about to become even more undignified than this. Because nothing, nothing was going to come between him and his praise and his Lord. You want to go a little bit deeper? You want to say, yes, I want it? And you better start praising in the good. You start praising in the bad. You praise him in the storms. Yeah. Yes. Yep. He starts stirring. You want to go? You want to say yes? Yes, I want it. He said, won't thou be made whole? Do you really want this? Do you really want it? You need to start throwing this ingredient in. Forgiveness. Oh, yes. I'm not going to go into the specifics. But for about five or six years, I harbored some unforgiveness towards a certain situation. And I just couldn't get any peace about it. And I knew I was being stubborn, Rod. I knew what I was supposed to do. But I was bitter, and I was angry, and I was upset, Seth. And the longer I held on to that, the more it weighed me down. And the more it caused hurt in my own life, and caused hurt in my family's life. And I believe, Jay, it even impacted the church I was ministering at's life. Because I believe that those things, listen, we impact one another. We do. We do. He said, hey, they're sitting in the camp. Aiken stole something, remember? That impacted his family. That impacted the camp. I harbored unforgiveness. And let me tell you what it took. It took God sending a young man into the youth group that I was over at that time that went through the very same scenario. I mean, and if I told you that, whoa, is the exact same scenario that I was harboring the unforgiveness in. And he came up, I gave an altar call, and he came walking up with tears in his eyes, and I said, What are we praying for? Anything specific? And he told me, He said, But I want to come and forgive him. And I mean, bam, right there. That pierced my heart. 
And I fell on my face and I prayed with him and I was just open with him. I said, now you're going to have to pray for me because I'm in the exact same scenario. And I released in that moment. I offered forgiveness. I threw forgiveness in the pot, Jay. Listen, and I allowed it to be stirred all together. In that moment, hey, I want to admit, you want more. Then you better start throwing forgiveness in the pot. You don't know what they did. You don't know what they said. No, I don't. Absolutely. But I do know this. I read, I can see wherever it went. I can see the accounts of what they said about my Lord. I can see the lies that they did. I can see how they harmed him. And when he hung on that cross, he forgave me. He forgave you. And he for, and he would have forgiven each and every person right, that harmed him. I believe this. He absolutely would have forgiven Judas. Yeah. And in fact, he hung there. I believe he did. It was Judas's opportunity to receive it. He died for the sins of all of us. We just got to come to the knowledge. We just got to come to the point in our heart where we say, yes, Lord, we'll receive your forgiveness. And when we receive the forgiveness of God, it's at that point that we got to forgive others. Peter said, how many times do I got to forgive them? He said, well, just start off by going 70 times 7. That's a whole lot of times. That's a whole lot of times. I, I know that things people say, if, it, if anybody knows it better than me, then let me know. I know what it's like to be talked about. I know what it's like to be lied about. I know what it's like for people to get rumors up about. I get it. And it hurts. Yes, it does. So I'm not sitting here and telling you that whatever it is that you might be harboring is easy to overcome. But I am going to tell you this. If you want true freedom, if you want more, wilt thou be made whole? It, we were made whole. Listen to me. When we, when we accepted the shed blood of Jesus Christ and we were saved, I believe he made us whole. I believe he gave us everything in that moment. But that doesn't mean that we're exempt from the difficult times. And there's times that words that people say and things that people do kind of just chink at, the, at our heart a little bit. But if you want freedom and you want more, then you better start throwing forgiveness in the pot and let him stir it all together. Listen, and then you'll go, <laughs> you'll go back and you'll taste that soup. It's like, oh, that tastes better that time. Yeah. Well, God was stirring it all along. You just were failing to throw the forgiveness in. You want release, you want freedom, and you forgive those people that's hurting you. Oh. Some, some of us, some of us maybe for 20 or 30 years. For 38 years, that man laid by that pool. 38 years, he lived a crippled life, if you will. Until one day the master came walking by. Wilt thou be made whole? And Jesus looked and could tell by his heart that his answer was, yes, I want to be made whole. I've tried every way I could. I've asked everybody I could. People at times will let you down. But I need you to know something. Jesus Christ is a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. He will never let you down. He said, and pick up your mat. Rise up and walk. Some of you just like me, are crippled by unforgiveness. Tonight, he's saying, pick up that mat and walk. Throw it into the pot. Throw it into the bowl. Let him stir it all together. I believe he's, he's been stirring 
Well, quite frankly, I just want to say this. I believe he always wants us there. I believe that's the desire of his heart, Tim. I believe that every time that we come together as children of God, that he wants to stir. And he wants us to, to taste it and see that he's good. But we let the troubles of this world sneak in and choke that out. Dad would throw it all in. And he'd take a taste. And he'd say, okay, maybe it needs a little bit more of that, uh, how do I say it? Worcestershire sauce. Maybe I ought to put a little bit more. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> we throw the potatoes and we throw the carrots in and we throw the celery. We throw all the ingredients in that we can. But you see, there is this, if I can call it, secret ingredient that the Lord sent down called the Holy Ghost. And if it's not in the pot, and you're just throwing it, you're wasting your time. <laughs> he said, here's the deal. You've been trying to throw it into the pot and make your own soup. And your soup ain't going to taste as good as what that soup is. He said, so if you really, really, really want more, if you really, really, really want it, then you better just let the Holy Ghost come in right? and let that be the secret ingredient, right? And here's the thing. He said, it's not really sacred. He said, I'm going to do what I want to do is ask. All you got to do is say, I want more. Yeah, yes, yes. The day of Pentecost, listen, they got something, didn't they? Yeah. Hey, now I believe they got more. And what did it say? It said the church was in one accord. And what was the Lord doing? Adding to their number daily. We want to see people saved in this place. More people saved in this place. Hey, then we better let him trouble those waters. We better let we better let him be the chef and let him make the soup. Amen. My soup's not gonna taste as good as his soup. It's just not. That's the truth. I love bad soup. He'll 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 watch us, Dennis. He always does. Uh, Dad, I like your soup, but I like God's better. Yeah. But he's he's always stirring. He's always stirring. Sometimes, sometimes we might not see it with the physical eyes. Sometimes we get in that spot where whether it be unforgiveness or whether it be because we're not giving him the praise, whatever it might be. But sometimes we get in a spot where we can't see it, but we can feel it. And then there's some times where we get in those situations and maybe we don't see it. Jamie, maybe we don't feel it either. But it doesn't mean that he's not there. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. That's a promise. This is what I like. You know what Paul said about God's promises? He said that they're yes and amen. That's what he said. The promises of, I think it's in Corinthians, the promises of God are yes and amen. So when he said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you, Ron, that's what he meant. That meant yes and amen. That is forever written in heaven. I'm going to be with my people even when they might not see me, even when they might not feel me. Elisha's servant comes stepping out of the tent and he looks up. And what he sees is an army chariots all around. The enemy was all around. Yep. And he says, I think we got some trouble. I think we might be in, Tim, a serious situation. And so he went back. He said, oh, hey, you might want to come see this. And Elisha comes stepping out of the tent. And he looked up. He saw something greater than what the enemy had. And he said this. He said this. He said, 
Lord, that you'd open his eyes that he might be able to see the host of angels that's all around. This is what I pray tonight, that the Lord might open our eyes so that we might see the host of angels that's all about us, that's protecting us, even when we don't see them and even when we don't feel them. And let, hey, you say, why did you say that? Because Elisha in that moment helped his servant. He helped his friend out. And there's times that we got to help one another out. Hey, listen, there's, there's times. If I'm making my own soup, don't you touch it, right? But here's the deal. God's making his soup, right? Then y'all better start telling the ingredients in it, right? You put your gift in. I put my gift in. Hey, listen, he'll stir it all together. Right? And that's going to be a good soup. <laughs> and those of us, at times it's all of us, that maybe we're not seeing very clearly. You start throwing your praise in. Yeah. Yep. That's going to unlock some things. That's going to bring the presence of the Lord down. And listen, you start throwing your unforgiveness in. You start throwing, you start throwing your love in. Greater love have no man. They lay down his life for his friends. You start throwing your service in, a heart of a, a servant's heart. You start putting all that in, and you'll help me. Yeah. And we can help one another. Yeah. But for far too long, we've been keeping our ingredients to ourselves. That's the truth. That's the truth. Or. We just expect one man to throw all the ingredients in. Yeah, yeah. Why wasn't that very loud? Because that was true, right? We expect one person, yep. right, to bring them all to the table. Well, if they listen, if we have not see anything else tonight, but everybody in the house, they've got something to bring to the table. They've got something to give to the chef. They've got something. Hey, he said, stir up the gift. They got something to let God pour in and make that soup real good. Yeah. yeah. I'll go back for seconds. <laughs> Maybe even thirds. Huh? He said. So. Can we get to the place? He said, Wilt thou be made whole? He said, Do you really want this? If we really Really want it. We're going to throw that praise. We're going to, we're going to throw the up again. We're going to throw the, some of the, yeah, we're going to put the ingredients in. But you know what I really think? I feel this. Now, let me say it like this. I've lived this. You know what I really, really think is going to unlock it? And what he really wants the church to throw in is the knowledge that we think we have of him. Hear me. For far too long, we've defined God. I felt that one. We've, we've tried to put God in a box. And in that, we've even defined the church. And we've defined one another. And we've defined ourselves. And when we do that, then we put limitations on what God can do in our lives. If I just say to him, I'm just a preacher, right? Then I've defined myself. Maybe the Lord's got something else he wants to give me. I say give it all. The same with you. Do not let yourself define who you are. And don't let somebody else define you either. And I want to tell you, that's what religion does. Tries to define who you are. Here, if you want a definition, let me just tell you my new definition of where I'm at. I'm a child of the king, right? I'm a, I'm a junior with Jesus Christ. I come here. I, that's who I am. If you want a definition, that's who I am. You're not defined by the spiritual gifts God's given you. That's right. You're not. Because these gifts that he has given you are for his glory, for his grace, for his purpose, how he sees fit. And if he wants you to have them, guess what? He'll give them to you. He'll give them to you. And if you want them, guess what? 
ask him. He says, you have not because you ask not. Do you really want it? Then ask him. Amen. Yes, sir. That just kind of came, thank you. I mean, don't let, don't let other people define you. You find, you find your definition rooted in Jesus Christ, a son and daughter of the king. Let that be your definition. And then let God do the rest. I've experienced God in some mighty ways over these last handful of months. And I say, praise God for it. And I'm thankful for it. And they said, I've already told him. He said, wilt thou be made whole? Do you want more? I've already said I want more. But Tim, don't you let me be defined by it. Absolutely. Don't you let me do it. I don't want to try and explain to you what happened. I don't know what happened. No, this is what I know happened. The Lord came to my house. That's what happened. Don't put some definition on me as to what happens. I won't do it to you. You won't do it to me. We just let God be the chef. <laughs> let him stir it up. And each and every time, I'm about finished. Each and every time. Each and every time. That he stirs it up. It's going to taste better. Yeah. And it's going to taste better. Okay. Just about that. I think it's John 10. Jesus said this. He said, the thief comes, but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. You can live that abundant life down here. You can taste the good soup, Cheryl, (laughs) right down here. Listen, I bet you there's great soup at your diner, (laughs) right? And sometimes I'm going to come and have some, right? But it's not going to be better than the Holy Spirit (laughs) said. Amen. Amen. You can taste it. You can, you, you can taste it down here. And every time you keep pouring yourself, you keep pouring those ingredients in, yep. letting him stir it up. But my, oh my, how's it going to taste when the trumpet sounds? Yeah. And when he says, hey, yes. I'm coming back for a people that's made themselves right. He said, there's a place. There's a place for you at my table. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Where we're going to be eating his soup for all eternity. Boy, that's going to be a good pot. Yeah, amen. Because we'll see him face to face. But until that day, until that day, you just keep doing your part. You just keep pouring in. Those ingredients. And when he says, wilt thou be made whole? Do you? Do you really want it? Just say yes. Just say yes. Don't try and figure it out. For far too long, I tried to figure it out. I tried to define it. There's no defining God. He's greater than any definition that we might be able to give him. Tonight. Tonight. He's already moved on people, but I believe he's still moving. And maybe you're in that spot. Maybe you're in that spot where you've tried to define him or you've let yourself be defined by someone else. Or maybe you're in that spot. Maybe you're in that spot where you've harbored that unforgiveness. Or maybe you're in that spot that you just aren't feeling very good. Tonight, he says, do you really want it? I believe you can have it tonight. There's times that we've been just like that lame, crippled person that's set by the pool. He's coming by. Waters are stirred. Ingredients are being thrown in. Ground has been cultivated. You can say however you want to say it. Don't let him pass by tonight. Amen. Yeah. As Bree goes and gets us off. There was a boy. I'll be real quick. There was a boy who was in 
I believe, Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he may have been Saul's grandson. Right. His name was Mephibosheth. And he lived in a place called Lodabar. A place where nothing really good came out of. And the Bible says that when he was a kid, the nurse went running out. He fell and he was crippled. Now, I don't remember if it said exactly how old he was. Five years old. When that happened to him. Right. When he was crippled. And for the rest, at least rest of his life, he was crippled. Just like that guy, that man that laid by the pool for 38 years. was crippled. And David, David said this. He said, is there anybody left? David became king. He said, is there anybody left in the line of Saul? And one of his servants said, yes, there is. There's just this crippled boy living down in Lodabar where nothing really good comes out of. Jonathan said, that's right. Thank you. David made a covenant with Jonathan. Thank you. Made a covenant with Jonathan. I said, I'll take care of your people if I go. And David said, well, if I go, you'll take care of them. They promised, they covenanted to take care. Now, I don't know if Mephibosheth knew that. I don't believe he did. But he said, send for him. They get down to Lodabar and they said, Mephibosheth, the king has called for you. It was his time to come to the king. And I bet you, I bet you he was a little bit shook. I bet you he was a little bit scared, miss. I bet you he thought, oh, no. Oh, no. He found me. I just kind of wanted to, I just kind of wanted to hang out here out of sight, out of mind, and just kind of be crippled. Because as far as he knew, That was the best life that he could have lived. Yeah, Yeah, you're right. Don't don't settle for the best life that you think you can live or that you've been told that you can live. They brought him before David. And David looked at him. I bet you Methuselah's eyes were great big. And I bet you he was... Top of him was shaken. And David looked at him. And he said, today, you'll eat at the king's table. Don't you dare settle. Don't you dare settle for the life that you think that you deserve. Because what God's saying is, you can come right now. Right now, you can come and eat at my table. There's a place at the king's table where you'll get to eat of that Holy Spirit soup. And he just keeps stirring and all he's asking of you is to say, yes, I want it. And to just keep pouring the ingredients into it. Tonight, as we stand to our feet, stand to our feet, I believe that the Lord's moving and I believe he's asking for people to come and just give those ingredients so he can stir it all together. And I believe we'll leave out of here here in a little bit. I believe we already can leave out of here and taste it a second time and say, that's pretty good. But do you really want it? All right.